Major Pandemic Predictive Programming, NASA Balloons, Bacteria Launch, Hospitals Prepping, the 1918 Eclipse, the same year as the Super Flu. Ladies and gentlemen, Rex Bear League Project, how the heck are you? There's so many synchronicities that I'm going to put together here in as quick as possible. It's fascinating when you look at the Super Flu of 1918 that infected more than 500 million people around the world. Extremely deadly. The links that I'm going to share with you compared to today's articles and the most recent news articles that I have found on the flu are quite similar. So let me share this with you. I know your time is very valuable, so I'm going to get through this extremely fast. Here we go. 1918. The total solar eclipse of June 8, 1918, that crossed the United States from Washington State to Florida. This path is roughly similar to the August 21st, 2017 total solar eclipse. Not exactly, but pretty close. Now, I've been doing some more research on the eclipses, and there is a total solar eclipse about every seven years, but we'll get to that on a later podcast. 1918, what happened? The flu pandemic from January 1918 to approximately December 1920 unusually deadly influenza pandemic. Now, here's what I find interesting. When you scroll down, you're going to see that it talks about, where's it at here? It showed the canine flu and the swine flu. The canine flu and the swine flu. If you look at a recent article that came out, this is from Texas. Rome, Texas, yeah, they've got Rome, Texas, they've got Iran, Texas, they have Paris, Texas. Well, Regional Healthcare Coalition meets to prepare in case of pandemic flu. Over 115 healthcare providers gathered in a meeting for preparations of a pandemic flu. Now, this came out Fox News. Child contracts influenza virus from pig at North Dakota State Fair. Then you've got multiple articles about how you need to beware of the dog flu. Indiana state officials warn that's the Indianapolis Star. State Board of Animal Health warns of increasing cases of dog flu. Then you look at the stuff that they sprayed, or they didn't spray, at least that I know of. They might have sprayed this stuff. They put these on what they call cards or dog tags. They look like dog tags. Speaking of canine flu, and it is a bird killer bacteria that is highly resilient to extreme temperatures and environmental conditions. So they spread this across the globe, in the atmosphere, in the stratosphere. Even got kids involved in this saying, hey, look, kids, this is exciting. Do you want to be an astrobiologist when you grow up? You can come be a part of this right now. Oh, nothing to worry about. It's just freeze-dried bee killer bacteria. No big deal. Let's see what happens. Well, it's called Bacillus zero thermo. Durans, or Durans, zero thermodurans, bacillus. I probably said that wrong. I don't care. You try saying it. You can probably do better than me. But this is a 30,000 times zoomed in from an electron microscope, what this looks like, this spore that they put into the atmosphere across the globe. And here's where it gets really interesting. Predictive programming. I have seen multiple videos and movies TV shows, songs, even sports that will use predictive programming for future events. Whether or not the people involved know about it, whether it's a magical exercise, like I talked to John D'Souza. This guy is a retired FBI investigator, really nice guy. I have the utmost respect for him. I need to get him back on the show. When I brought up the predictive programming in the media, he said it's a Sidzil type magic where They'll use certain things in the media to create a group conscious connection, which makes it happen even faster sometimes. Now, that second part I added, that's my mindset. But he did bring up how the media uses that as magic. And once again, if you create a Sidzil, Sidjil, some people call it. What did you say her name was again? No, it's not Jill. It's Sidzil. That's what I say. But, hey, everybody's got their own way to say it. Most people say it's Sid Gill. <laughs> I can't even say it that way anymore. I've said it's Sid Zill so long. Anyway, I'm divagating. I apologize. I just made you lose 30 seconds of valuable time. 
So here's where it gets really exciting and s- scary at the same time. This guy's YouTube channel I just discovered today. Enter the 5T4RZ. Enter the 5T4RZ. Make sure to check this guy out. I haven't even gone through all this stuff yet. I just saw a few of these videos. And he shows how the Metallica... There's a Metallica video that came out that shows a balloon being shot across the globe, or not a globe, the, the U.S., and it almost looks like it's that it's very similar uh, to the 33rd degree parallel, or I shouldn't even say the 33rd degree parallel, but this most recent eclipse that starts in Oregon, which is the 33rd state, and ends in the 33rd degree north parallel of uh, South Carolina. And you can see this, meta- I'm going to leave the links for you guys. Watch this video, or go to his YouTube channel, watch the video there. You can also watch it on Metallica's own website and YouTube channel, which I would recommend also that shows these balloons being used for a zombie pandemic. Not only that, he did some really good connections of the most recent TV series, or I shouldn't say most recent, but one of the more recent series called The Strain. If you've seen The Strain, there's a bacteria that's launched that causes a zombie slash uh, vampire Dracula type archetype. And then also V the Final Battle, where they release balloons bioweapon to kill the reptilians. That's very interesting. So I'm going to leave the links in the video description box. Make sure to watch this. A ton of predictive programming going on right now. And 20 years ago. Metallica's old school. Here's one thing that I would like to know. Let's, let's, go, let's take this a little bit deeper. How far... How far do these guys in the entertainment industry... How far in advance do some of them know? I mean, are they a part of this magical formula? Or are they unknowingly a part of it? Do they know or do they not know? Do some of them know which ones? There's about 300 execs that control the majority of what you see and hear in the media, unless you're coming to Leak Project. And even here at Leak Project, a lot of the information that I get, I have to find from the mainstream media first. And then come up with my own conclusions. Now, a lot of this stuff you're not going to find in the mainstream media. If you go to leakproject.com or youtube.com slash clandestine timelord, you'll get access to a plethora of information and stuff that the mainstream media isn't even going to touch. But when it comes to certain things like NASA, for example, what we're discussing right here, uh, I had to... First, I found out about this article on Sputnik News talking about how NASA was launching this bacteria into the stratosphere that's highly resilient, and they didn't leave a link. So I had to search through NASA, their own website, to actually find that article, which I did. And then if you read about this bacteria, if you read the actual white papers, they say that this bacteria is in a a class of its own. They've never found anything like it. And this is the kind of stuff they're spraying, or they're not spraying, I keep saying spraying, maybe they are, but this is the kind of stuff they're launching into the atmosphere. What if your kid's a part of this? They're talking about how 10-year-olds are being a part of this because they're going to be future astrobiologists. Well, will they even have the opportunity? Or will this cause some kind of pandemic that will wipe out a large portion of the population? I don't know. I certainly hope not. I don't accept it. I will not assimilate. What do you guys think? What are you doing to prepare? Are you staying as healthy as you can? What kind of stuff? Let me ask you this. I mean, if this stuff is resilient to 200 degree temperature, then you're you're not going to be able to get a fever that would be able to destroy it. Once you get up to 108, you'll probably die. Or very shortly after that, if you get a temperature of 108, you're in bad shape. You're in really bad shape. And they're launching this into the stratosphere. And they're saying, oh, no big deal. Nothing to worry about. It's freeze dried. It's okay. No big deal. There's a lot going on, you guys. A lot going on. Make sure to be aware of your surroundings. Be prepared for the worst. Expect the best. Hope for the best. Plan for the worst. Be excellent to each other. The more we know... Here's another thing that I was thinking about today in the Jeep. Not my Jeep. I rented it. (laughs) Thank goodness because I've been taking some amazing roads on this road trip. Well, I'm divigating again. You ever wonder about how the powers that be, those that do control the majority of the media, the funders, the MFers, the money funders, some of these select elite that they like to think of themselves as, 
they oftentimes tell us what they're going to do before they do it. So it's like a gentleman's bet to them. They tell us what they're going to do in the media. They give little clues, little bits and pieces. And if we don't pick up on it, then what if it happens? But what if we pick up on it and talk about it and say, hey, this is what they're planning on doing. This is what they're thinking about possibly doing. Then in order by us doing that, does that break that karmic bond or does that break the karma cycle where it makes them, at least in their mind, more so even that they are responsible because they give us the opportunity to say no, we say no, then they come up with a new strategy. Have you ever thought about that? Even in the Bible it says no one knows the time but God. So if, we're, if we continue to stay v- vigilant and look for things that they throw in our face, so rightfully so oftentimes because they throw it right in our face and we can see it just like that, and oftentimes we have to look for it too, But if we find it and we say, hey, look, this is something that might happen at this date, well, then people know about it, right? So is that offsetting doom? I don't know. I question so many things that I question the questions that I come up with sometimes with the question that I just had. So go figure. Be excellent to each other. That usually helps. People seem to be nicer to you when you're nicer to them. And also, if you want to know more, why not question everything? Is it bad to question the status quo? Is it bad to question your faith? Is it bad to question your religion, your spiritual beliefs? Is that bad? Or does that make you stronger? Does that make you more in tune with what you believe? Be the change you want to see, leakproject.com.